My name is Chris Barrera, and I'll be your facilitator today for the webinar um, entitled uh, The Future of Remote Work. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Hub Engage <clears throat> for uh, putting on this uh, continued ed education seminar. Uh, you know, they're committed to uh, providing education to HR professionals. Uh, we do plan to be adding HRCI and CPE credits uh, later on this year. Uh, so uh, keep an eye for that for maybe other members uh, of your staff uh, that have different requirements. Uh, we hope to be able to help them there as well. All right, um, so Hub Engage is a recertification provider. Um, this course is approved for one SHRM PDC. Uh, for those of you that are SHRM certified, you're required to uh, earn 60 PDCs uh, every three years. Uh, we're committed to providing at least one webinar a month, uh, which will allow you to uh, get 12 hours annually uh, from these uh, courses that we're putting on. Uh, so we hope to be able to help you, uh, you know, throughout uh, the next uh, year uh, and beyond uh, capturing those credits and be able to earn that uh, free of charge uh, just by attending. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about the recertification process, uh, go out to the SHRM.org website or you can email me directly, chris at hubengage.com. I'll be uh, happy to answer any questions. And then one other thing, as soon as we send you the CE certificate, kind of best practice is to go into your SHRM portal, uh, go in and add your PDC. Uh, nothing is uh, more um, uh, frustrating or requires a lot of work to try to put all those 60 in at one time. Uh, so if you do them as you earn them, it's cer uh, certainly so much easier uh, to maintain them. All right, so let's get started with um, uh, the future of remote work. What are we going to be covering today? Uh, we're going to be covering uh, remote work trends in 2021. Uh, we'll be covering some best practices for remote workers. Uh, we're covering the topic uh, of the importance of cybersecurity. Remote work and employee engagement. Uh, our session last month was all on employee engagement, but uh, there is a focus uh, that we should consider uh, in our strategies uh, for remote workers. Uh, and then I want to end with remote work policies. Uh, review some sample policies with you and talk about uh, what you should uh, be implementing if you haven't already uh, for your remote uh, workforce. All right. Um, so we chose a topic this month uh, to do the webinar on the future of remote work. I know we're probably all tired of hearing about the pandemic. Uh, it's pretty much in, uh, a part of everything we do, right? Uh, I turn on the news, I listen to the radio, I look at my Twitter feed, uh, it's everywhere. But, you know, it's still, it's still a, a, um, uh, um, an item that affects us every day, uh, both, you know, personally and professionally, uh, and of course, economically. So let's talk about the pandemic. It started really around late January 2020. Uh, here we are in uh, June of 2021, and I think while we see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, we're certainly still recovering for the consequences, right, uh, of the pandemic. 2020 created a large dependence on our remote workforce uh, as businesses, governments, uh, educational institutions, uh, and many other organizations ceased activity that required social distancing. Employees and organizations who had never worked remotely before were now required to kind of figure it out. Uh, companies and IT departments uh, were over almost overnight uh, trying to figure out how they were going to get their employees to work remote. As you know, uh, Amer as Americans, we've always proved to be a resilient country. Uh, we found a way to adapt and overcome. Uh, but now we must look ahead to the future uh, and adapt again. Um, you know, uh, what is the future of remote work? And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so let's talk about some remote, remote work trends uh, in 2021. Uh, our friends uh, uh, at Gartner uh, had a survey of business leaders, a uh, very reputable firm uh, for research, and 82% of respondents intend to permit remote work after returning to the workplace. And this is a survey of business leaders. So 82%, that's pretty high, um, saying that they will uh, allow uh, and intend to permit people to work remotely. 
And I want you to kind of hold on to that for just a little bit, because I think that um, there are some things that we should talk about around strategies for our remote workers uh, that I want you to just kind of pencil in the back of your head. 47% will allow full remote work. So of those uh, business leaders that were surveyed, almost half of them said that they'll allow employees to fully work uh, remotely. Uh, and I think that that's definitely <clears throat> a trend that's going to continue. Uh, I think you have some uh, business leaders that are uh, even after, despite the pandemic and, and, and having employees remote work, uh, they still, uh, you know, have a little reluctance uh, to remote work. They want to bring people, bring people back into the office. 43% will offer flex days. Uh, and 42% surveyed said they would offer flex hours. And again, I want you to pencil that in the back of your head. I think that's going to be um, an overall strategy that we're going to be using for our employees, uh, not only to improve employee engagement, but also to address, um, you know, the possibility that uh, folks will have to come back uh, to the workplace. And then 13% of leaders are concerned over productivity. Um, I believe that that's still a valid concern. Uh, I also sincerely believe that um, it can be a disconcern if uh, we've properly prepared, uh, we're uh, you know properly prepared with uh, policies and procedures, uh, and that we're setting expectations for employees that are working remotely uh, to be able to um, uh, squash that concern of productivity. And I have uh, I'm going to prove to you here uh, a little bit later on that. Um, you know, productivity is certainly something that I think people have a concern over, uh, but will prove uh, that, um, you know, uh, realistically, uh, that shouldn't be a very big concern. A recent survey from Upworks, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Upworks, uh, they're a very large uh, gig economy uh, organization uh, that uh, predominantly uh, 90% of workers are hired and work remotely from from uh, uh, from their from their home locations or other locations. Uh, they indicated in a survey that one in four Americans will work remotely, up from seven percent in 2018. So 25 percent of Americans will work remotely, uh, up from seven percent in 2018. So I mean these um, these numbers are pretty staggering, and I think that pretty much supports that we'll continue to see, um, you know, remote work um, be a, a trend uh, that employers will need to use uh, to continue to maintain uh, and uh, have employees uh, be productive. All right, so uh, our friends over at Gallup, you know, as you know, they put out a lot of survey information, uh, very, very, uh, very reputable uh, research firm. And uh, Gardner says that uh, many Americans who are working remotely to avoid catching or spreading Corona uh, virus 19 in April and May have since returned to the workplace. And so you see here in April of 2020 that, you know, you had almost 51% of uh, respondents that were surveyed uh, working uh, remotely. Now we know there are other uh, uh, organizations who don't have uh, the ability to work, re uh, work remotely or uh, maybe have a segment of their employees that are unable uh, to work remotely. Uh, and I know we're focused on remote workers, but we will cover a little bit of non-remote workers too uh, in this session. So 51% uh, in April of 2020 down uh, to 33% uh, in September of 2020. Um, 18%, we had an 18% point shift uh, that's been offset by a seven point uptick in the percentage who are now sometimes working. You can see here that in April of, of uh, 2020, 18%, up to 25% in September who are now remote, working remotely. So maybe workers who normally didn't uh, have a chance to work remotely were definitely starting to, uh, to work remote. And so you see those numbers up. Um, and then you have, uh, again, a percentage that never uh, were able to uh, work remotely uh, uh, as a result of uh, maybe the job. Uh, or the organization that they work for. So according to Gallup, nearly two thirds of US workers who have been working remotely during the pandemic would like to continue to do so. 
Uh, in all, 35% would work remotely, which some people prefer to do so, while 30% would like to do so because of a concern for COVID-19. And then another 35% would say they'd like to return uh, to working at the, at the office. And so, you know, those numbers are pretty, pretty even across the board, but you have a 35% have segment that want to continue to stay remote. Um, you have 30% uh, percent, uh, who would simply like to work from home to avoid uh, the consequences of COVID-19. And um, then you have 35% that want to go back to the office. Um, we mentioned in our session last month for employee engagement that um, this was going to be um, a big uh, issue once we came into post post pandemic and we began to return to the office to be a big dissatisfier uh, among employees. Um, my son actually works for a major global software company. He's a middle manager and he's been speaking. We were talking last week and he was speaking to his employees about returning to, to the office. They've been notified that sometime in the fall they'll have to return. And many of them are, are threatening to quit if they have to come back to the office. Uh, you know, most of them have been working remotely for a year and a half. Some of them, some of them had circumstances where they had to move, uh, move back with family. Maybe the other spouse lost their job. And a lot of things have happened in that year and a half. And uh, now we're asking people to come back to the office uh, and people are willing to quit over it. So I think it's going to be a big deal. Uh, and if companies haven't really thought about how they're going to address those uh uh, those concerns or how they're going to mitigate those problems uh, in the future uh, as we get out of, uh, of COVID and, and, you know, post post pandemic and we start returning to the office uh, that, you know, we're going to have problems with employee engagement. We're going to have dissatisfaction. Uh, so just something I think that, that, that we need to consider in our strategies uh, for returning back to work uh, and moving away from remote work. In a recent survey that I just studied, 46% um, of organizations have not communicated a vision uh, for those for their strategies post COVID. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. I think uh, many companies have done a good job of throughout the pandemic and um, uh, after communicating uh, the changes that are happening and what we'll be doing uh, in the future. But I think to be fair, a lot of companies are still trying to figure it out, right? Are we coming back to work? Uh, when does that happen? You know, we're starting to see, uh, you know, states open up, mass requirements being uh, no longer required. And so things are changing, but how so? Um, and then, of course, we have, you know, things like new variants uh, for COVID-19 that are also uh, throwing some things out there. So I think there's still a lot of concern for employees about how um, we're going to deal with COVID uh, going forward. So remote, uh, continue to talk about remote work trends in 2021. Uh, Many employees are moving to a hybrid workforce uh, when possible. And this, I think, is a, a kind of a silver bullet, right? Because I think uh, you have an element of employees that had to return or were, were working remotely, and some of them having to return back to, to the office, uh, either because of uh, you know, requirements or, or uh, you know, because of the jobs that they're doing. Uh, but I think that if employers can balance that uh, and still provide some type of remote work, um, I think that that will help uh, organizations manage, uh, you know, these issues with having to return back to the office in the future. Um, I live in the state of Utah, and recently this, uh, the state legislature uh, passed a law to allow employees to work from home post-COVID. Um, they found that uh, they actually had increased productivity um, and they were in the process of building a new building. Uh, they were actually able to um, reduce the size of the new facility, uh, convert that to flex space. And flex space means, uh, you know, similar to hoteling or, or common office space. So instead of having assigned offices, more open area, and that's to accommodate uh, flex employees or hybrid workforces that work from home and temper and on occasion, uh, work in the office for, you know, collaboration and other types of things. Um, I just read a SHRM article uh, a couple of days ago that the federal government, the Biden administration, had recently approved remote work for federal workers. Uh, remote work, uh, or rather continued remote work, 
and hybrid schedules. Uh, this new policy is likely to be very popular with many federal workers who have rated the flexible working arrangement for the last 15 months highly. Uh, managers also conclude that productivity did not suffer while 59% of the federal, uh, federal employees work from home uh, during this time. Uh, so, you know, typically states and governments are behind, uh, you know, public businesses and private businesses uh, who, uh, you know, uh, as far as, you know, trends and things, but they actually uh, are, are right in line with figuring out that productivity, productivity is up. Uh, they didn't see any, any, uh, any uh, lacks in productivity. Uh, and they're finding ways to let people to continue to work from home, uh, be productive, um, you know, be uh, per, be be uh, adding to that employee engagement quotation, uh, and um, you know, really uh, being flexible uh, and still getting the job done. And I think uh, performance and other things uh, are going to change too as well, uh, because I think performance is not going to be measured on the number of hours you work or when you work, but it's going to be based really on what you do. And I think that, um, you know, this pandemic taught us that with the remote workforce that really is about results and not so much about the number of hours that are being worked. Um, concerns for maintaining corporate culture. Yeah, if people are working remotely, uh, it takes an element out of um, things that uh, we used to be able to take advantage of, you know, people in the office, uh, you know, all hands meetings, uh, being able to interact with managers, being able to interact with management, upper management you know, by having everybody in a, in a uh, central location. Uh, so certainly uh, I think there are gonna be some concerns for maintaining corporate culture. And I think uh, we're gonna have to figure out strategies uh, to be able to, uh, to mitigate that. Uh, reduce conference calls. Um, you know, I've worked remotely for 10 years now. Uh, and I remember uh, there were a couple of things that I used to avoid uh, or that I didn't like rather about going to the office. One of them was the uh, morning commute and the uh, rush hour commute back. And I only lived, you know, 15 miles uh, from my workplace, but it took me an hour, an hour and a half uh, of travel time. Um, and then I spent probably 70 or 80% of my time in meetings, uh, which meant I'm working nights and weekends trying to figure out uh, how to get the rest of the work done. Uh, I think that uh, conference calls and video conferencing, you know, Zoom and, and all those things, um, I think we were overcompensating. Uh, I think that people, well, we need to find a way to reduce that uh, so that we can focus on the work at hand and, and really become uh, more uh, reliant on asynchronous communication. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, chat, uh, videos, uh, emails, uh, online forums and collaborative documents. Um, you know, there are organizations and uh, this seminar today is not a, not a sales pitch. Uh, it's about uh, sharing with you information, uh, but there are organizations like Hub Engage that have, you know, single area, uh, a single tool to allow uh, employees to communicate with their managers, with their company, uh, all in a single location. And I think that's going to continue to be a goal for many organizations uh, to be able to access information anytime, anywhere, and not really have that two-way uh, synchronous communication that we're used to, but being able to just get information that we need uh, at our fingertips. Uh, I put videos in there. Uh, um, I've had the great fortune of working with global teams who are on different time zones. And why well, I mean, we work a few hours together. We spend a, a big part of that uh, un unsynchronized in our time zones, right? You know, I'm asleep when they're working and they're, they're working when I'm asleep. But by being able to provide, you know, a video of the problem or the solution uh, or explaining what I need, uh, we're able to use the tools and still uh, actively coll collaborate. Uh, easy access to work information, that's really just a kind of a subset of everything else that I just talked about, uh, making sure that uh, it's at their fingertips and whether that's a mobile device uh, on, their, on their smartphone. Uh, we know that our smartphones today are really our computers uh, that, are, that are small and portable. Uh, we still have to have access to desktop information on our laptops and, and computers, uh, but Ultimately, it's all collected in one place. Um, and then lastly, security of data and information. These are huge trends. We've been watching the news lately. Uh, a lot of uh, hyper, uh, a lot of uh, uh, hacks, a lot of ransomware. Uh, you know, companies that I personally work with that have been exposed 
were not exposed because we had got access to their servers per se, um, uh, you know, breaking in, but uh, getting that information from somebody's laptop to be able to get into those uh, systems. So security and data and information are gonna be really critical uh, as we continue uh, these trends for remote work in 2021. And we'll talk a little bit more about security and data here uh, later on in this presentation. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a quick peek. Uh, I don't know if there's any new chats or anything. Uh, I just wanna make sure there are no questions. All right, we're good. Um, so I said that I put a little bit of non-remote work uh, trends uh, in 2021, because uh, there are uh, a segment of some of our employees, or maybe there are segments of, of, of most of them that are not able to, re uh, to, to work remotely. Um, and so some of the trends for non-remote workforces uh, in 2021 are that uh, we have to have information everywhere. Uh, we have a greater reliance on mobile devices. Let me kind of just piggyback what I talked about uh, earlier for remote workers. Uh, uh, having communication and being able to uh, distribute data um, very quickly. Research indicates that employees on average waste three hours a week looking for information. Uh, they're not able to find what they need. Uh, definitely a problem even for people who are on site finding information and access to information. Um, and then again, using a single communication platform that's easy to access, extremely user-friendly, and of course, uh, secure. Uh, and then safety. Uh, many, of the, many of the vendors out there today are, are providing uh, not only information, but access to safety information, uh, act, access to safety and compliance. Uh, my wife actually works for a major healthcare provider and in the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we, of course, we were worried about her safety, uh, but her organization was outstanding in providing real-time information, uh, you know, via, via uh, company communications, uh, via their mobile devices, letting them know uh, what the requirements were for, um, uh, for their safety, uh, what the requirements were for patients, and how they were supposed to uh, comply uh, with, the, with the policies. Um, and then later on, you know, we felt that she was actually probably more safe at work than anywhere else, even though uh, she was constantly uh, going to be exposed to COVID. And that's because um, they were able to disseminate information quickly, uh, disseminate real-time information. And then one of the other things that I wanted to call out that uh, can be a part of safety is providing uh, per personal protection uh, equipment for our employees. Those employees that have to be on site and interacting with clients or with other customers, uh, providing PPE, providing masks. You saw that there are still a big percentage, what was that, 30 uh, 30% 30 of folks don't wanna come back to work because they felt that, you know, uh, they're still gonna be exposed to COVID-19. It's gonna be very important uh, that, you know, uh, there are policies and procedures uh, and there are ways to handle uh, how they come back to work and that they also have access to safety equipment. I think that's going to be all important for non-remote worker trends in 2021. Um, <clears throat> elevate the employee engagement experience. And, you know, I think we still need to uh, focus on employee engagement uh, by improving morale, uh, removing barriers to achievement, uh, encouraging collaboration and efficiency with easy access to information, uh, and sharing information with uh, team members. And I think uh, for non-remote workers, this is just as important uh, for remote workers as well. And I think that you can kind of take that away that those are things that you can work with both sets of employees uh, and making sure uh, that the employee engagement experience uh, continues to be uh, one of the um, items that uh, you work on in 2021 and enhancing that experience and we'll talk a little bit more about some of those things in, in the presentation of what you can be doing to enhance uh, that employee engagement. So best practices uh, for remote workers. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth in policies, but you should have guidelines uh, for home office, uh, such as designated work areas, uh, provide training related to workstation setup and safety measures, uh, including uh, ergonomics. And there's a quick question if you get copies of the slides for the webinar absolutely we can certainly send those to you um, and, and in addition to any of the supporting documents that are included uh, in the presentation today 
Uh, when appropriate and possible, conduct periodic checks of employees' home offices to help identify and, and eliminate uh, work areas and safety hazards. Um, I recently took a, uh, a test, a proctor test, and I thought it was really funny, but uh, one of the things that they did when I was uh, getting ready for my test is I took my, my iPhone, uh, a video of my iPhone, and I showed, showed them my work area, and I had to show them uh, my, my, the back of my work area, the walls and everything to be able to see what it looked like. It's actually pretty simple to do. Um, now what they were looking for was to see if I was cheating or if I had any books put away or, or things of that nature. Uh, but you could very easily check uh, an employee's workspace uh, by doing something like that. And so um, as we talk more about policies and what we should be doing, uh, these are just some of the things that you can do to make sure that people are safe at work. Set work, uh, set fixed work hours and meals and rest periods for telecommuters. Doing so can help establish whether an injury uh, was in the course of employment, okay? And this is really more important. We'll talk more about policies here and some of the details, uh, but it used to be uh, that remote workers were really exempt personnel uh, and uh, didn't have to, we didn't have to worry about their hours. We didn't have to worry about their meal breaks. When they're working from home, they are working uh, and all state and federal rules apply. Uh, so you should consider that if you haven't considered it in your remote, um, in your remote policies or remote work policies, you should. Uh, so for those that are hourly, especially important to make sure uh, that you're meeting all of the um, requirements uh, for those employees in their states uh, that they're working. All right, I'm trying to get this to the next slide here. All right, so best practices for re remote workers, um, hybrid remote and on-site work. So we talked a little bit about that uh, earlier in the presentation of him maybe having a hybrid approach. Uh, frequent manager check-ins. Uh, it's gonna be really important as we continue remote work that uh, we have that interaction with our managers. Remember when we were on site, uh, we were able to interact with our managers. We were able to interact with, um, with management. Uh, in last month's um, employee engagement seminar that we had a webinar, we talked about different approaches. Uh, you know, there are, there are surveys, there are interviews, um, you know, there are regular, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's a number of ways uh, to make sure that we're checking in with our employees uh, and, and uh, getting that feedback uh, and establishing that good feedback loop uh, that's so critical uh, in the employee engagement um, uh, equation. Invest in good communication tools. Uh, you know, I think it's it's good to have GoToMeeting. It's good to have, you know, Zoom and, and some of the others uh, that are out there. Uh, you have some really good collaboration team like Microsoft Teams uh, that not only includes chat and, and, and intranet, but also document portals and other things. So there are, there are other tools uh, that are out there uh, with multiple vendors that will provide you uh, good ways to uh, invest in good communication tools. Uh, and then adoption of cloud-based HR technology. And so these tools that you use, while some of them are really, really good and provide collaboration, if they're not integrated with your HR uh, technology, uh, there could be some shortcomings. And so you know, take a look at those, uh, make sure that you know, you're, you're selecting a vendor, you're working with technology that uh, is tied to, to HR. Ultimately, the HR system is, is the system of record. You want all that information. Uh, to tie seamlessly because you know, that's what employees are looking for, right? They're looking for uh, that one place to get information that they need uh, so they can be effectively do their jobs and get information that they need. Uh, so the importance of cybersecurity, according to uh, global research firm Gartner, they predict that the next two years will see a dramatic 50% spike in enterprise data that's not only distributed uh, both, but both created and processed outside of the data center. Uh, and so as we, as we move uh, to the remote uh, workforce, as we continue to remote, uh, remote workers, um, there are things that we should consider for our cybersecurity. Uh, one is we should adopt, adopt a zero trust approach. It's really not uh, about the individual, uh, but it really is about just making sure that everything's secure. And whether that laptop is in, you know, or, or computers left uh, inside a car or left on uh, an employee's desk at home, um, you know, we, we need to make sure that it's secure 
uh, that there are ways to uh, secure that information automatically if you step away from the computer. Uh, there are many things there that we should uh, consider uh, in our uh, cybersecurity. Uh, company owned devices versus bring your own device. Um, I believe that probably the most security comes from company owned devices, uh, but I know with, uh, you know, resources and things that you know, we may have allowed our employees to um, use our own personal devices. Uh, and I still think that that is okay as long as uh, there are policies uh, that they have the required, um, you know, antivirus and maybe access to a VPN and some other things to make sure that they can uh, secure the information uh, that they're working with. Um, I always uh, send it to site on, on the uh, on company owned devices because you can more readily control them. Uh, a lot of times uh, what exposes people's uh, or company's information is the personal use uh, company devices. So I think it's uh, it's important to, to have a clear strategy uh, and making sure that uh, those uh, devices are secure. I mentioned antivirus. Uh, VPN, anti-phishing, password management, uh, firewalls, those are all things that I think companies should invest in to make sure that uh, remote worker uh, have, uh, you know, security uh, and are not easily um, able to obtain uh, the information they have stored in their computers. Make multi-factor authentication mandatory. Uh, I know this one's very frustrating. I know it is for me, uh, but it's probably one of the best things that you can do with your email, uh, with your with your your uh, chat, uh, with with uh, all of your applications, most applications today have multi-factor authentication, and so you should make that mandatory um, in your policies um, for uh, in, in, for um, making sure that devices are secure and that information is secure. And then, lastly, provide security training for your remote workers. This can be very simply done. Uh, you know, with uh, you know, PowerPoints uh, or maybe with a vendor who provides access to uh, video information for training. Bottom line here, I think, is you want to make sure that you educate your employees uh, on security, but you also want to document uh, that they were trained in security uh, parameters and that they're very, very serious uh, and that they should uh, be taking every precaution uh, to protect your company information. All right, remote work and employee engagement. Uh, many of these topics we've kind of already hit uh, in the uh, presentation, uh, but I'll hit them again really quick uh, as they relate to employee engagement. Uh, easy access to workplace information. Uh, this is making sure that you, know, you have systems that are integrated with your HR technology that are accessible, very easily accessible and user-friendly, uh, preferably uh, access uh, on, on their mobile devices. Uh, to be able to have uh, access to real-time information. Uh, easy access to manager and management. I mentioned that earlier uh, in the presentation. Access to safety equipment and information. Um, and I think we, when we think about safety equipment, uh, we think about you know maybe in construction or hospitality uh, that there's safety equipment that's required to be, uh, to be used. But we're also talking about PPE for, uh, you know, um, uh, protection from the uh, coronavirus. I think that's something that, you know, needs to be considered as well. Great communication tools, uh, phone and video conferencing, instant messaging, uh, flexible work programs. I mentioned flex hours um, and uh, flex days. So I think that um, those need to be considered in your employee engagement strategies um, and in um, whether you're combining them with, with hybrid uh, remote work schedules, or you're just making things a little bit more flexible employees, I think that that's going to be a big part of your employee engagement strategy. Work-life balance. And when it comes to remote workers, um, I think this is one that um, most of us have the hardest problem with uh, uh, when we're working remotely. As I mentioned earlier, I've been working remotely for 10 years. Um, and uh, while I'm exempt, and uh, start early in the morning, sometimes work late at night. Um, it is very easy to get caught uh, in that, you know, um, constantly working uh, and not having any time off. And I think as, as we do more remote work, that there should be clear policies 
uh, and there should be clear um, uh, guidelines uh, around when work starts, uh, when, it, when it ends, uh, and then we do really achieve that work-life balance and that we don't get burnout uh, from because we're working from home and we're able to work those extra hours. Emotional connection, uh, making sure that we have uh, mechanisms there uh, to be able to, to not only share work information, but also to collaborate and, um, you know, just sometime to visit and connect with each other. I see all kinds of things that uh, people are doing uh, to enhance that emotional connection. Uh, I see uh, office hours um, that are designated for people to get together and, and talk generally about work or maybe other things, maybe even personal stuff. Uh, having, um, you know, uh, night uh, or, or um, virtual happy hour. Uh, and again, bringing people together, uh, not necessarily just to talk about work, but just to have that uh, connection with their coworkers. So there are a number of things that uh, strategies you can use to be able to, uh, uh, to address the emotional connection. Uh, and then lastly, employee rewards, uh, just making sure that, um, you know, as we have remote workers, uh, that we're crafting our employee rewards uh, to give real-time um, feedback on their performance. And whether that, uh, as I mentioned last month, we did a whole section on employee engagement, uh, but we talked about things like, you know, notes and cards, uh, you know, of course, you know, there are gifts and rewards that we can do as well, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that you can do uh, that help uh, reward employees real-time uh, the none are all directly related to compensation. Uh, so making sure that uh, we incorporate 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 those things, excuse me, uh, in our remote work strategies uh, for our remote workers. All right, so let's talk a little bit about remote uh, work policies. Um, I'm going to show some some uh, policies that I have here, some sample policies on telecommuting. Uh, but it's really important uh, that you do have something that outlines uh, what telecommuting is and how it should be performed, uh, especially as I mentioned uh, with, uh, with hourly employees uh, that you're really spelling out those policies uh, and something that's being communicated to them and then of course them having them sign it. Uh, there is also a, should be a policy for expense reimbursements. Uh, and you know sometimes we can, um, Forget about those. Uh, I know that most cell phones today uh, are all one data plan, they're unlimited. So there really isn't uh, any extra charges that are being used for, uh, for using that phone. Uh, but for instance, the state of California has specific rules around uh, being able to use their personal cell phones for work. And that if they are, irregardless if there's a cost increase to the employee, that they need to be compensated. Uh, so you make sure that you know your policies and rules uh, in your state, as well as federal. There's a couple of things that are out there. If you're a SHRM, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a subscriber, or you have access to SHRM, the SHRM documentation, uh, there are great tools out there that can help you um, find that information. They have a multi-state uh, comparison tool. Uh, that lets you to select the state that you're in and uh, various topics and, and what those rules are for each uh, uh, for each state. Let's go and take a look at some of these policies. So here are some general expectations. This is just a sample policy, but things that we're addressing in our policies should be uh, expected behavior. Uh, you know, remote employees are expected to be available and communicate uh, during scheduled work hours, right? So working from home doesn't mean uh, you can work whenever you want, but you do have to have an expectation of when they're available uh, and when they're scheduled to work. Um, you know, just because they're working from, from home doesn't mean that, you know, uh, the offsite po work policies are uh, non-existent. Uh, consumption of alcohol during work hours was never acceptable. You know, I hear that this is a really big problem uh, since COVID uh, for, for, you know, a lot of people in general. Uh, but, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like that's something you should have to call out. Uh, but, you know, people are working from home and have access to information or have access rather to stuff that they would normally have at work. Uh, so probably something worth putting in your policies. Um, then they should seek a quiet and distraction-free workplace. 
Um, I know it's been difficult for remote, remote workers who normally don't have an office space at home or a spare bedroom. I've seen people working in their kitchen, uh, working in their hallways. Uh, but, you know, uh, when they're talking to your customers and, and talking to coworkers, there needs to be an expectation that they do have a quiet place to work, uh, just like they would be uh, at the workplace. Uh, some things for virtual meetings. Uh, turning on video is encouraged, but not required. Uh, I think that's important. I, I know a lot of people uh, in a lot of organizations regard people use video, but some people aren't comfortable with it. Uh, so I think you should give that as an option. Uh, but if they are uh, using the video, uh, I think I see here that their ca casual dress is acceptable. However, use discretion, uh, no sleepless tops, pajamas. So, you know, if you're going to work from home, um, you know, there's still a, an appropriate uh, wear uh, uh, inside your home, and especially if you're going to be on video. And so some of these may seem like common sense, but these are just some examples of things that uh, you should be calling out in your policies. And of course, uh, you know, we're certainly uh, not uh, labor attorneys. Please consult with your labor attorney or your counsel on uh, some of the things you should include in your policies. But these are just some examples of things that um, I think are important in making sure that uh, we're setting an expectation uh, when we're working remotely. Take a look at one more here. This one's it's a short term policy. Uh, and so, you know, uh, maybe uh, you'll have an occasional or, or you have an employee for whatever reason uh, needs to, to be able to work remotely. Uh, you might have a different type of, of agreement. Uh, this might be, uh, you know, temporary. So again, just an example, of some of the information uh, that you're collecting, uh, you know, importance of communicating with their manager, getting direction from their manager, uh, you know, et cetera. So I can make these available to you if you like uh, these sample policies, let me know. Uh, you may already have those implemented and have those remote policies, but if you don't, be glad to, uh, to be able to, to, to help you with information that we do have. Other considerations, um, under federal law, employers are only required to reimburse for work-related expenses when they uh, drop the employee below the minimum wage. And so I mentioned with hourly employees, this is something that, uh, you know, you should think about um, and uh, consider. And while the, the, the feds only require um, reimbursing expenses uh, at the below minimum wage, you know, your state laws could be very different, uh, as I mentioned, like in California. Uh, so make sure that um, you're uh, reviewing those policies for your employees in those states um, and there are not, not any gotchas. If working from home, are, are employees covered under workers' compensation? Yes, generally, the, the answer is generally yes. Um, again, working from home is no different than working on site. Um, and so that's why it's extremely important uh, to make sure that you have policies around uh, expectations, uh, activities, uh, working home you know, safely uh, so that you know, uh, you're not paying for a workers' uh, comp claim. Uh, while they left the, uh, the house to go get uh, lunch over at McDonald's or something like that. You want to be very clear uh, with your policies and make sure that you're uh, covering yourself there. So in conclusion, uh, remote work in 2021, uh, I think that remote work is here to stay. I think it will continue to increase in popularity, uh, not just because of the pandemic, but I think that what people are now used to uh, you know, considering that, you know, many employees have been doing this for a year or more. Uh, we'll need to develop policies and procedures that are clear for all levels. Uh, so these policies shouldn't only be about, um, you know, how employees perform that remote work, uh, but also that managers understand uh, what those policies are and they're providing guidance to their employees. They're providing proper guidance uh, and uh, proper expectations, uh, you know, all the way down. Enhanced security of information and systems. Uh, I think this is something that um, is uh, very important if you're gonna continue to uh, allow your employers to, re to work remotely uh, and probably something that you should continually um, evaluate uh, as, you, as you continue uh, you know, and, and let people work remotely. Uh, we should include remote work on hybrid uh, we should include remote work or hybrid work approaches in our long-term employee engagement strategy. Uh, as I mentioned, I think it's going to 
could be a big dissatisfier, uh, asking people to come back to work. And so, you know, what, what type of things can you do uh, to still em engage employees, allow them some flexibility uh, and, and uh, you know, still meet those requirements? Okay, yeah, very good. So uh, the comment is that they do have some policies, but they hadn't considered the language uh, regarding, um, you know, the alcohol use. Um, um, that's good. Okay, so um, there's a question on, um, on the previous webinar for engagement uh, and how are companies measuring engagement with remote workers. Um, that's a great question. Uh, that's a great question. And I think that uh, probably the easiest way to, to measure uh, employee engagement is that, um, let's see here. Uh, so there is a little bit in blue, a little bit above, there's a link uh, that I posted. And let me just post it again here uh, for, the, uh, for the survey uh, so that you can uh, answer the survey and, and, and uh, get your C certificate. Uh, so I just posted it again here at the bottom. Uh, for, so back to measuring employee engagement. Um, I think surveys is a really great way to do that. Um, and, um, and if you'd like us to provide uh, you know, some sample surveys or information, reach out to me uh, or reach out to Yash and um, we can get you some, uh, some templates that we have uh, on measuring uh, information or me measuring employee engagement. Uh, there's some other tools that uh, Hub Engage has as well to help you with that. Uh, but surveys is probably the easiest way, um, you know, doing interviews uh, and, you know, of course, one-on-one uh, -on -one manager uh, uh, interviews is probably the best way uh, to get that information. Well, I, again, thank you for, for attending today. Um, it's a pleasure uh, being able to share information with you and uh, being able to provide you continuing education. Uh, and again, reach out to us if you have questions uh, on employee engagement. If you have questions on remote work or policies, uh, we're glad to share anything that we have. Have a great week. And hopefully we'll talk to you next month uh, where we'll be talking about uh, employee vaccinations. Uh, lots of information out there from the CDC, uh, from OSHA uh, and, and other organizations around employee vaccines. I think it'll be a very uh, interesting uh, webinar. And so hopefully you can attend that one next month. Bye-bye.